The new White House budget request includes huge amounts of money for cybersecurity and modernizing legacy government systems to make them easier to secure. Some of that money would go to CISA and other organizations inside the government that manage information security. Congressman Jerry Connolly is senior member of the House Committee on Oversight and Reform. He's chairman of the Subcommittee on Government Operations. Mr. Chairman, welcome. Thanks for coming on the program. Great to be with you. One of the organizations that you have worked on in, the, in your time in Congress is FedRAMP. What's your uh, view of the importance of FedRAMP in light of some of the high-profile cyber incidents that we've seen in government and outside of government? I see FedRAMP as, uh, you know, a key part of the architecture for modernizing IT in the federal government. And IT modernization is directly related to cyber protection. Um, old clunky systems that can't be encrypted or encrypted easily are vulnerable. Um, and so modernizing and moving to the cloud, I think are important components in protecting federal assets. And FedRAMP is the program within the federal government that certifies private sector companies that want to do business with the federal government in providing cloud services. Uh, so I think it's very important and I think it's important to codify it in law. Right now it exists solely at the sufferance of the executive branch. So it could easily go away tomorrow. Um, and codifying it in law, uh, you know, institutionalizes the program and also gives proper oversight. Beyond the codification of the program, Congressman, how would you like to see FedRAMP evolve as the threat landscape evolves? So, you know, I've got a bill uh, that would codify FedRAMP, but would do other things as well. In fact, four things. Um, the FedRAMP bill that has passed the House three times, and include, by the way, was the first bill to be passed by this Congress on the floor of the House uh, in early January, uh, which I'm proud of. Uh, it A, establishes a presumption of adequacy for all security assessments of cloud products that have already received FedRAMP authorization. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel every time you apply to a new agency. Secondly, it requires FedRAMP Program Management Office and Joint Authorization Board, the JAB, to establish metrics that can be tracked to ensure proper implementation of FedRAMP. It authorizes $20 million a year toward the program to increase the capacity of FedRAMP uh, and the Joint Authorization Board to review security assessments and increase the number of FedRAMP authorized products each year. And finally, it establishes a Federal Secure Cloud Advisory Committee to ensure dialogue between the FedRAMP stakeholders, all of which have a cyber aspect to them, of course. I, as I listen between the lines of your description of that legislation, I don't hear anything that indicates an objection to the way that FedRAMP is working now. Sounds like you want to give them more money to scale it, which indicates a measure of success. Am I reading well, too I much think, into you know, your that, words? Well, that the presumption of adequacy standard we're introducing in the law is designed to speed up the review and approval process and to cut back on the costs. So FedRAMP originally was seen as something that could kind of cut through red tape and get you certified in six months, maybe at a cost of a quarter of a million dollars. Uh, instead, FedRAMP kind of evolved over time to multi-year efforts of application, multiple applications required, reinventing the wheel and costing companies millions of dollars. So we want to go back to the original intent of FedRAMP and we think that standard of adequacy, uh, presumption of adequacy really gets at trying to make it more efficient. So the, but it doesn't sound like the outcomes are dissatisfactory. It's just the process by which the FedRAMP process reaches those outcomes that's dissatisfactory. Is that a fair yeah, read on my I, part? I, I would say improvements have been made and uh, in good faith, and we're getting better feedback from the private sector, but it's still not where we want it to be. And again, codifying it in law, putting this presumption of adequacy standard in the law, I think really helps speed things up and uh, gives everybody a standard that they can measure themselves against. Uh, separately on cyber uh, from FedRAMP, sir, uh, across the agencies, if you ask individuals, especially in the chief information officer's office, whether they need more reporting about cybersecurity, they would all say no. Given the incidents that we've seen over the last uh, several months, is there more reporting that agencies should prepare for regarding cyber or is it maybe time to rethink that model? From my point of view, if we go back to FATARA and the FATARA scorecard, 
the modernization of IT systems in the federal government is directly linked to cyber. You know, cyber is going to be as good as the IT systems you've got in place. Um, can they be encrypted? Are you using the most recent and comprehensive encryption you can? Um, are you, do you have monitoring systems? Do you have early warning systems? Do you have detection systems? Do you even have offensive capability in some cases uh, to redirect, misdirect uh, the would-be hacker uh, and or cause them some trouble? Um, and so uh, the IT modernization systems we have in place really are critical and integral to the whole cyber effort. But yes, I believe that in addition to the reporting requirements for tower hats in seven different broad categories, um, I believe that more accountability with respect to how cyber secure are you uh, needs to be required of our CA CIOs. We have about 30 seconds left, Jerry. Uh, given your mention of Fatara, how does the, what's your vision for what cyber could look like on the Fatara scorecard and how it would be measured and graded? You know, we haven't entirely fleshed that out, but there's no question with recent developments, both in the private sector and the public sector, uh, that we're highly vulnerable. There are malign actors at work and we need to protect ourselves and the assets of the federal government on behalf of the American people. So that's gotta be a priority as we move forward. Congressman Connolly, thanks very much for your time today. I appreciate thanks, it. Thanks, Francis. Thank you so much.